Hi, welcome to SelectCon presented by United Masters. Today we have a super exciting conversation about creatives behind the lens with two of the industry's most iconic photographers. I am Sammy Approved and I have the honor and privilege of starting this conversation. So let's get into it. Uh, I want to briefly introduce Jonathan Mannion. I had the privilege of just running into him randomly in New York. Um, he was so humble the first time I met him and it was extremely refreshing and um, just a kind hearted spirit to meet someone who is just a real human being. Um, but he's not the average human being. He's a master of his craft. Jonathan has produced images that have defined legendary artists and entire eras of cultural iconography, which is why he's still in demand with groundbreaking talent today. So we're going to get into that later. But I also am joined by Cam Kirk, who's known for his amazing, candid and raw style of photography. He's worked with a number of notable brands and people in inter entertainment. Uh, but these two are ideal representatives of two powerful generations of creatives in the culture. They have not only produced influential works, they've taken on an entrepreneurial approach to profiting from them. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm super excited. How are you guys? <laughs> great. Great, awesome. great. Thank you. great over here in Los awesome. Angeles at the moment. Oh, nice. Me as well. Yeah. Me as well. Nice. Awesome. Well, I want to get straight into it. Uh, the I'm going to do my questions to both of you. Um, but... I'm sure that for those aspiring creatives and photographers that are listening to this conversation right now have the question of how to become the photographer or creative that people call on. You both have that at this point. You have mastered it. Um, when people need an amazing album cover, they go to you, Jonathan. They go to you, Cam. So, Jonathan, maybe you can start and just let us know. How do you become that in-demand photographer or creative that people call on? Look, I think it takes a lot of time. Uh, it's uh, this is a twenty-five year career, and and I think that at every single moment along the way, you have to be really passionate about what you do. You have to believe in sort of being of service to everybody else's vision. Obviously, it comes through you, so you get you know an incredible look at kind of sharing your 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 unique perspective on any you know sort of given moment album project cover whatever it happens to be um but yeah I, I think it really comes down to relationships period like once an artist believes that you have his or her best interest in mind you're giving your all they can see it they can feel it you're knowledgeable you've done your research you show up you know no matter what kind of day you're having you're a professional enough to kind of deliver over and over um, you know, I think that that's, that's really at the core of it, you know, and yeah. I've always found that the relationship with the artist is the most crucial, the most critical component. Cause even if people at the labels change, they're coming back to you because they know Absolutely. that you have their back, you know? So I think yeah. that's, you know, obviously a technical knowledge, which really needs to be an unconscious kind of skill, whatever you do, know your craft. You know, to, to yes. the point that like nothing, you know, even in the face of crisis or losing light, you can still deliver. But but I really do think, you know, that combination of um, relationship with the artist and then knowing your craft, passion. I mean, it's kind of kind of normal and, and natural to kind of say that. But, you know, people forget. But those are the really uh, crucial elements and hard work and dedication and everything else but uh that's what's gotten me through you know beautifully absolutely no that's a perfect mm -hmm. answer you know i love that you mentioned you know mastering your craft um for you cam uh just i know that you have a great relationship spending um college in atlanta and you know just building upon the network there um and music specifically what would you say to you know, creating genuine and authentic relationships with these artists who, you know, not only are you doing business with, but they've become your friends. They become, you know, people that you can have normal conversations with. Um, like I introduced you to before, like we're human beings. We do some cool creative mm -hmm. things, but we're human beings at the end of the day. Um, so just talk about, you know, 
building a business while also building your relationships with these people and these entertainers that you worked with from Gucci to 21 Savage to, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, most definitely. I think, uh, you know, Legend John said it best. I'm actually, you know, a proud follower of the blueprint that he laid out, to be honest. I, I remember hearing his story of how Reasonable Doubt came about and how Jay-Z was in his apartment to upstairs and just being that fluid and open to work with artists, even in your personal space and being open to whatever it takes to get the job done, no matter the budget is, you know, treating people like humans. You know, artists don't want to have to shelve out millions of dollars. They don't have to. So anytime they're working with a creative that understands that, respects that, um, and is able to, you know, not necessarily cut corners for the process, but do what needs to get done to get it done in a timely manner that always resonates. So, for me in Atlanta and in my, I guess, coming up when I started doing photography, um, you know, Atlanta's not really known for, in my opinion, like having like a business model, the labels here, they don't necessarily reside here. So a lot of your relationships have to be built with the artists, the management, the entourage members, because you're not just getting booked from the label at the beginning to shoot with these guys. So your rapport, your access is 100% built on the artists. So for me, I always understood that and I always knew I need to come in and bring added value wherever I can. So if that's using my marketing knowledge to help an artist understand like, yo, not only will I take the picture, I know how to submit it to complex or the blogs to get it picked up and we can work on that manner. And I just added value. I did a number of things like that, that just got me in the door and that gave me the access to take the photos. And then from there, it, it also definitely goes into mastering the craft. I mean, the first photos I took, I look back now and I'm like, wow, like how did he, how did these even go viral? I didn't know what I was doing at all. So then now, you know, you get more opportunity, but you have to get better and you have to be ready to get those opportunities. So I started out with, you know, Young Scooter and Gucci. And, you know, at first, all I was given access was to shoot them in the studio. You know, all right, you can come around, you can take a couple pictures at, you know, while we just recording to me getting better you know, honing on my craft, getting better to them, them trusting me to, okay, it's time for something for real. You can shoot this. You can be a part of this. So a lot of it is just mastering your craft, consistency. And then like you've mentioned a few times already, man, we all human beings. Everybody's a human being. Everything is human nature. I tell people all the time, I don't care how rich you are. People appreciate even a free meal, free lunch. If you're coming to pull up on an artist, bring me some lunch, like something like that. You never know how that could just, make someone feel good. And when you can spam things like that, then you can understand how to really build a genuine relationship and rapport where they trust you. And like like you said, John, they know that you got their best interests at heart. That's what they want to deal with because people don't want to get to know new people. They don't have to. That is true. That is so true. You hit yeah, it on, um, on the head. I think also you Go said ahead. something really important is like that access. You know, you could be the greatest photographer on the planet, but without access and without that relationship, without them feeling like you really want them to win and you're going to win in the process. But, you know, that whether it's a lunch or a thing or a beverage or a hug or just listening to some of their crazy problems. I mean, the, these worlds are massive and there's a lot of demands mm -hmm. on these artists. And I think when you can humanize somebody in a, in a real way, um, I think it's going to, it goes really far, you know, cause they don't want just yeah. the yes men or yes women around them. Just like, you're the greatest, you're just the greatest because then, then you're off balance all the time. There's no trust, um, that you really have. Like he's just going to say yes anyway, cause he's trying to keep his job. I think when you can have that honesty as well, um, to say, look, I got your back. I don't think that's going to work. And here's why. And I think this is how we improve upon that idea that you have. That's brilliant. But let's take it here. You know, I think also being brave enough to have those conversations with people um, in real time. No, they know that you're thinking about them, their best interest, the project and really deeply executing whatever it is that's on the table to uh, to achieve. Absolutely. I think that's amazing. Um, you know, one thing that Kim said is, um, you know, not necessarily being so worried about a budget or, you know, just making it happen early on. Is that something that you would advise a new and up and coming photographer who's just trying to get their 
feet wet in the industry and build those relationships? Or, you know, how, how, what are the best business practices uh, when working with entertainers? Because as we know, they're thinking about a number of other things, especially when they're just getting off the ground as well. Um, but it seems like for both of you building your your businesses and your rapport with these artists, you started from the ground up. So what advice would you have in terms of like handling the business? And, you know, because we do have to eat um, while creating these authentic and capturing these authentic moments. Like when do you talk about business? When do you talk about money or a budget or all these things? I think. you were getting to shoot magazine covers and things of that nature and now when i look at it, i'm like man shoot i done shot a uh, magazine spread for 250 250 dollars it's like the game has changed so wow. much um now where you really have to get creative with how you're finding uh these budgets and you have to put yourself in a position to find these budgets so for me you know i've had a number of different uh, ways I've approached it. At the beginning, it was all about building a name and rapport because I knew once I had a name in this game, I'll monetize it in any way I want. Um, so early on, I realized uh, the most valuable asset is not necessarily about the money. It's, all, it's more about the relationship with the artist and access to the artist. If I can continue to access these artists, I can 10 other companies that have paid me for the access I have to this artist or, or because they... they see that I shoot this artist so much when they want a chance to book him for a magazine spread or a campaign, they feel like I got to go through can because they have the best report. So when I realized that early, I shifted. And again, this is just works for me. It doesn't work for everybody. And this is also something that I think is special to Atlanta. It doesn't work everywhere. But for me, I shifted my, my customer base from thinking my customer was the artist. to my customer is actually the business behind the artist. So my customers, the label, the, the clothing brands that want to work with them. Uh, now you have these tech companies, Spotify, I always put that want to monetize that artist. That's my, my customer. The artist is my collaborator. You know, we work together. So I have certain rules within my own business to where, you know, when an artist treats me like an equal and you reach out to me directly, you ain't really worried about budgets. Let's just get in. Let's create. We'll figure it out on the back end. When you treat me like a business and you have your manager hit me and their manager hits me or your label hits me, then we're going to get down to business because people that are hitting me, I know are directly monetizing the work that we're going to do together. So I learned that early on. And like I said, it's a blueprint that's worked for me. I wouldn't necessarily work for everybody. But I also knew that, you know, I wasn't going to be one dimensional and only getting paid for clicking the button. So I knew early on I was going to open up a studio. And then I was going to take the following, the fan base, the notoriety that my name had, and I was going to create an open space for other photographers to directly come in. So now my studio does 600 appointments a month in Atlanta. It's probably the most booked studio I personally think in the world. But who knows? I don't have a fact checker for that. But that comes from the relationship that the community sees me have with this artist. So I'm directly monetizing my relationship without actually taxing my friends direct. So I'll have them come to the studio just to add more marketing value to my studio and I can monetize it with, through a different customer base. Um, it doesn't work like that for everybody. Now, don't get it twisted. There's a time to put your foot down and get the money. You know what I mean? Just depending on what they're doing with your photo. That's, that comes with knowing the game, um, knowing like your usage rights, knowing all these types of things that you know, okay, I'm not going to shoot this one for free because I know this is going to end up in stores or directly monetized. You still have to learn the game, but you have to be open to understanding, you know, what's most important within that particular project. Is it, is it a building a relationship for a long term goal or is it right now? I just want to eat and I don't care about the artist. I don't care about the relationship. To be honest, sometimes it's both ways. It, sometimes it goes that way where you're not so excited about working with this artist, but the budget is right. You want to get your money, but then sometimes you're super excited with the artist and you just want to lock in and you trust that it's going to come on the back end. That's what's worked for me. Right. Um, I'm sure that photographers have different approaches. 
Jonathan, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. I mean, look, I think early on, uh, as I entered the arena of hip hop, which is what I wanted to shoot, you know, based on my love for the music and doing college radio, being in New York in 1993, it was a scene that was like growing and really emerging. You know, Bad Boy started the record label. Wu-Tang is crushing New York radio, the emergence of Biggie on the scene. So it's kind of a different moment in time a little bit. But um, I think what was cool early on is we didn't even know what we were doing, you know, like with zero responsibilities except, you know, working, learning your craft. And and for me, I assisted a lot of heavy hitter photographers. I think that mentality of being of service, but learning um, when somebody else's sort of reputation and name was on the line. Like I'm working for Avedon. He's doing Versace campaigns and Pirelli calendars. Everything else that I'm doing at that moment is a smaller job, you know, but you learn how the big dogs are doing it. And I think that knowledge was, um, really critical to have as I sort of jumped in to try and be a businessman at the same time as, you know, a creative soul. I think that there's a lot of shooters that have to rely on an agent to be their mouthpiece um, because they don't have a business sense or savvy and some don't even want it. They just want to take pictures. But I think you can only get so far without really understanding all of the aspects of the job. I mean, Cam, you were touching on knowing your contracts, you know, having different strategy that you apply to yourself and what you're doing, you know, I mean, that's incredible to 600 appointments a month. You know, I would say that is the most book studio, like you've created (laughs) based on your name and reputation, uh, you know, and something incredibly valuable to the photo community, which is probably, probably why photographers, you know, respect you and dig you because you are providing a service even to them. But, you know, it it comes back a little bit to community. And, you know, I think in the same way that we were building what community looks like um, and looks like still today, you know, working with Jay-Z as a 25-year-old young man and he was 26, like we knew what we were doing because we were dope, but, you know, like not really You know, there was no deep contracts. I think now everybody is is on another level of understanding of business, of being on time, how money is wasted. You know, so there's a learning curve in it and it has been a growth process all the way through. I'd say the biggest thing, though, is uh, clarity and transparency and not being afraid of having those conversations, being able like, hey, this is my value. What are you using it for? A, B, C, D. I'm cool with that. You know, you ultimately get to decide whether it's okay with you and it's okay to say no. And it's okay to say, I can go to this far. Um, you know, and I think really understanding that it is a deep discussion. Two people are trying to get to an answer that works. It's just reasoning it out with confidence, but also knowing your value. And I think that your value, you know, increases or changes over time based on projects that you've done based on the knowledge and sort of, you know, power or whatever that you've amassed or prowess or understanding of your, um, you know, the, the work that you're creating, you know, but, I, but I think that, yeah, just the more clear you can be as you step into these arenas, you get the contract, but also like get a good lawyer, like get somebody that can teach you, you know, along the way. I don't claim to know everything I'm learning every day. The game is changing every day, you know, like the emergence right. of like NFTs, like, I didn't have to think about that a I'm month happy ago. you said that. That's and now yeah, everybody's I'm so like, happy you said that. You know what you should do? You should do an NFT. I'm like, yeah, I know I should if I could only yeah. figure it out. Like coming soon. But yeah. all right, now I have to rely on 20 other people that are studying this on a daily basis. Okay, now my business shifts or pivots or or I choose like, hey, that's not the way I want to play the game. You know, like you get to decide. And I think that that's important that, you know, your word is the final say, you know. If you say no to a project because you're not feeling it, it's a no, you know, but if you want to, you know, sort of jump in and give it a try or you're inspired by an artist, you know, you might be so inspired by an artist that you'll do it for nothing, you know, and and there's been those cases. I've approached artists like, you know what, you're dope and I'm going to shoot your album cover for free. Like, what is even happening? I, I don't even understand that, you know, it's a long time. It's been a minute since I've done that, but you do 
yeah. kind of give of yourself when you just want to like, look, as a photographer, I wish that I didn't have to get paid at all. I wish I was just independently had all the money in the world. I would just shoot exactly what I wanted, you know, because there are days, you know, Cam, as you said, like there's days that you rise to a different level because you're inspired by the person that you're working with. And then there's days like, okay, I just have to make this guy look great. I don't have to love the music, but I have to make this person look awesome and do my job, the component, the small puzzle piece that is needed today from me is a great photo, a great cover, a great package, great whatever, you know? So a lot to think about. There's a lot of levels to this and a lot of ways to process it. But uh, yeah, honesty, transparency, integrity, pretty basic kind of stuff in business but within this industry it's not so basic for some and i and i think you, you, right. some lessons are learned along the way um the hard way i know i've learned plenty i'm so happy that you mentioned nfts because i've just been on a deep dive through this whole process and this new world of you know different currencies and it's just a lot to learn right um, and it's a growing concept and a lot of artists, uh, digital artists, visual artists have benefited from it. Entertainers have benefited from it. Um, but it just brings me back to just protecting your art. Um, I'm sure a lot of creatives, especially mm -hmm. aspiring creatives have experienced this in some way where someone reshares their post without, you know, giving them credit or whatever. It's always a growing conversation between the photography yeah. community and creative community in general about, you know, protecting your art. So, as you mentioned too, over the last 20 years or so, the industry has changed so much, has evolved so much. Um, you know, we do have social media integrated in there and all these different platforms that your art could be passed around, you know? So NFTs, for those who aren't familiar, are meant to um, give you some sort of ownership over that and for someone else to have ownership over, you know, your digital art and your digital currency. So what, what ways um, or what tools do you guys use to owning your own creative property or do you kind of relinquish that in certain, you know, just give us a rundown of how it's worked for you, Jonathan. And then Cam, if you have anything to add after that as well. Mm -hmm. You know, for, for pretty much the entirety of my career, I have worked diligently to protect the work. Right. One, because it makes the artist know that you're on their side. If someone is making, you know, a hoodie, I mean, I would just shut it down, you know, just say, all right, send them a cease and desist, like try and maintain as much control or be selective with what you put out there in the world. Just so there is that that control to the best of your ability. People are still going to do it if they want to do it. I mean, probably once a week, somebody decides that they enjoy my picture. And they want to throw it on something, merch, T-shirt, this backpack, whatever, you know, make posters, make a calendar. You know, I think there's less calendars than there were, you know, in the days of walking around the mall, maybe, you know, 15 years ago. But every single day, some of it is they take the chance. Like, I'm going to try if I get caught, then I'll just pay out then. But if I don't, then I've just made all this money and I don't have to think about it. Maybe he won't see it. Sometimes they don't know the rules. You know, like, oh, wow, I didn't know that I could do that. That's my face. I was like, yeah, but we made it together. And that's why you have a contract. And that's why everything needs to be spelled out really, really clear. Here's what you can do. Here's what you can't. You know, and I think that saves a lot of grief afterwards, you know, or it's the first example that you can look to to say on page two, if you look down paragraph 10B, it says, you know, merch third party usage is separate, you know? So again, this is like knowing right. uh, your contract as well. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a really, it's a really tricky space. It, and literally bef like two minutes before I got on this, I uh, complex magazine decided to post uh, a DMX mural that somebody painted. That's of my original picture. And it was like mural by, you know, Josh Smith or whatever I said, don't forget the originator. Don't forget the person who, like, without my photo, you have a very different mural. So trying right. to also stand up for photographers to say, look, claim it. Claim your work. Your work is an original piece of art. Somebody tracing it, like, they may be incredibly skilled or give a twist to it that you, you're, you're even excited about. It takes your work to another level uh, in a lot of ways. But I don't think you should be... Um, excluded from that conversation and the accolades or 
uh, acknowledgement that comes with that, because that's also part of um, brand building, you know, say like, like the, the photos don't take themselves. Like it comes from a source. And I think that's really important, um, you know, for, for people to understand out there that it, it really means a lot to photographers um, when you tag the photo, like great photo by, you know, Cam Kirk, great photo by Danny Clinch. Ben Watts, anybody, name any great shooter. You know, I, I think it's really important and I think it should be um, standardized within this industry. And I think the more we all talk about it, we all demand it. It's like, oh yeah, of course you got to tag it. You know, I think it's like with painters now, you're going to tag the painter, right? We, I think we all understand that as a collective, you know, group working on the internet and like you tag the painter, you tag somebody, and if you don't, you're going to get checked pretty quick by somebody that is in that creative space to say, oh, I'm dope painting one of my favorites by Amy Sherald. You know, like that acknowledgement is there, but it's not always there for photographers. And I think that that's our work now to change it, to stand our ground, to be really clear. And uh, I do it all the time, you know, just for my own work. Or, you know, there's a little army of people like, don't forget, Jonathan Manning is dope. Like, go to Mochi, <laughs> you know, like, or whatever it is, like, it's, uh, it's really important. And I think people are, are realizing that and recognizing um, that that should be included. That is another element of hip hop that without uh, it, the visual landscape of it would look very, very different. You know, our role as documentarians is essential for the growth of this movement and how people are perceived. It's not just what you wear, it's documenting it, sending it to outer space and around the world in a split second. Like what we do is important and, and, uh, and let's own it. Let's own it as creatives, you know, writers, stylists, like makeup artists, manicure, you know, sort of, you know, nail techs, like mm -hmm. it's important. It's really important. We work, we work yeah. just as hard, if not harder to make people look incredible, um, to the best of our ability, you know, and the dedication, man, I think we, we deserve our flowers in real time. I agree. I agree. I agree. Cam, I just, uh, we're, we're going to wrap it up soon, but I just wanted to ask, you know, I mean, it's, it's for both of you, but Cam, if you could touch on this, like, what is your advice uh, for creating timeless art and a long lasting legacy in a space like the photography industry or the creative industry? Um, obviously you have your own photo studio and you've been able to, you know, create a community of, other creatives and photographers in the city of Atlanta, which wasn't necessarily there um, to begin with. So could you speak to just creating timeless art? A lot of your photos themselves are very just raw and it's just of the natural essence. You're not doing too many things in the background to make these people look and, you know, be viewed and represented as themselves. So um, speak to that and how you create those moments.
Wow. You guys are so motivating and inspiring. I hope that you know that you have really, you know, Jonathan obviously inspired Cam Kirk and Cam Kirk is inspiring. Both of you are inspiring a whole generation of other photographers and creatives out there. So just thank you for your art. Thank you for your time, your energy in these spaces. Um, it's so greatly appreciated to know both of you Um just great people, you know, just, I think that's the basis of it too. Like just being a good person and, and wanting to do it for, for the good of just the art. So thank you. Yes. Um, My pleasure. I could talk to you guys. Uh, we're doing what we love, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's a yeah. blessing. We get to do this. We don't have to do this. Yes. This is not a job. We This is like yeah. life's work, you know, a ministry at a level you know, if you're, if you're that passionate, but you know, Cam, I think you spreading the word to the next generation, arming them with the tools. It's like the, all of the, uh, speed bumps that I've hit along the way. I I'd like for other people to miss those there and not fun, you know, yeah. just as others yeah. have taught me how to, how to avoid a couple or things to think about ways of thinking. So yeah, man, it's, Absolutely. it's great. It's great. Well, I thank you both so much for being a part of the conversation. Thank you to United Masters and SelectCon for this platform um, to inspire and uh, motivate other creatives to do the same. So thank you for your time. Make sure you guys follow Jonathan Mannion on social media, as well as Cam Kirk and all of their other businesses and their ventures. I'm going to look out for some more legendary photos coming from the both of them soon. You all can also tap in with me at Sammy Approved on social media platforms as well. Thank you. Yeah.